Good day, and uh, here is a mini lecture about the Euler characteristic and the genus of a surface. Um, in the previous video, we learned what is a surface um, vaguely, and uh, now we're going to learn how do we tell them apart. So here we go. Uh, to any surface sigma, I can associate a number, an integer, called the Euler characteristic of sigma. And it's written chi of sigma. That's a chi. So here are some properties of that Euler characteristic. Well, first of all, if uh, you've got two surfaces, sigma and sigma prime, and they're homeomorphic, then they have the same Euler characteristic. Uh, second of all, we need some sort of starting information. It tells us that the Euler characteristic of the disk is just one. Uh, next rule, the Euler characteristic of a disjoint union, if I place two surfaces side by side, well that's the sum of the Euler characteristics. Uh, next, uh, if I take a surface sigma and add onto it a strip, so uh, a rectangle um, glued on to sigma at its two ends, well if I do that then I get a new surface sigma prime and its Euler characteristic is the Euler characteristic of the previous thing, minus 1. The next rule is kind of similar. If I take a surface sigma and take a disk, and I attach my disk to sigma by gluing it uh, around its boundary circle to some, some part of the boundary of sigma, then I get a new surface sigma prime. And the Euler characteristic of sigma prime is the Euler characteristic of sigma plus 1. So here's an example or two of that in action. So I'm going to show you why is the Euler characteristic of the sphere equal to 2. Well, it's because I can write the sphere as this union on the right hand side there. I can think of it as the lower hemisphere, which is going to be my original surface sigma, union with this disk, the upper hemisphere. And the upper hemisphere is glued along to the, along the boundary to the boundary of the lower hemisphere. Uh, so this is an old surface sigma, which is just a disk, with a disk attached. Um, so that tells us by applying uh, the final rule on the right hand side that chi of sigma prime, which is the sphere, that's chi of the old surface plus one, but the old surface was the disk, so this is one plus one, which is two. Uh, next example, uh, the Euler characteristic of the annulus is zero. Why is that? Well. I can write my annulus as being homeomorphic to this creature here. What is this? This is uh, a disc with a strip glued to it at its ends, right? So the disc here is probably just, uh, this homeomorphism is gonna take that disc there to a small region down the bottom, and it's gonna take the strip to everything else. Like that, okay, get rid of that. Uh, so this is a disk with a strip attached at its ends. So the penultimate rule on the right, on the left hand side there tells us that its Euler characteristic is one, uh, the Euler characteristic of the disk, minus one because I've added a strip, which is zero. Okay, from the Euler characteristic, we can define the genus. It's the genus of a connected surface sigma. And it's just given by a formula. G of sigma is equal to two minus chi minus c all over 2. What is this c? This is the number of boundary components. Uh, so, well, here's an example. What about the annulus? Well, 2 is 2. Uh, chi of sigma, we just saw, chi of the annulus is 0. And the number of boundary components is 2. Remember, it's the inside boundary circle and the outside boundary circle. Uh, so that's my minus 2. And altogether, I get 0. Uh, similarly, so that was the annulus for the sphere. Um, well, uh, I have 2. I subtract the Euler characteristic of the sphere. That's 2. And then I subtract the number of boundary components, which is 0. And I get 0 again. 
Uh, so the next important thing you want to know is the classification of surfaces. It says that two connected oriented surfaces are homeomorphic. When does that happen? Well, if and only if they have the same genus and the same number of boundary components. So under those circumstances, we know the surfaces are homeomorphic. Okay, so that's the end of the mini lecture.